of our producers, Matt Frucci, is there on the ground talking to us by phone. What can you tell us, Matt? The first one I saw close to the finish line from where we were. It was big. It was booming. I saw a big mountain of smoke come up. Uh, and about 10 seconds later, across the street from me, on the sidewalk, another big explosion. Uh, people are hurt. They've stopped the Boston Marathon. Everyone rushed indoors. I'm now inside the Copley Plaza Mall looking out on the scene. And I can see swarms of police officers treating people on the scene. I count at least five, six people. And I can remember walking through the finish line corral, which is like three quarters of a mile long or so. And, and you get some food and you get your medal. And, uh, you pick up your stuff and you, you're able to go to an area where you meet your family and I'm, I saw my wife and like I started crying which at this point in light of everything else that happened seems so petty but I was disappointed and I didn't run well and my wife said hey do you, do you want to stay down here and kind of enjoy the atmosphere or do you just want to go back to the hotel and I said let's just let's just leave um, and so we walked a couple blocks and got on the subway and it was while we were on the subway that uh, both bombs went off near the finish line. The first time I met Tim was the first day I ever went to a cross-country practice. Uh, it was in the morning one summer and it was raining and we, so we couldn't go outside because there was a storm. So we all got on treadmills and I remember Tim all the other guys bumped it up all the way to the max speed, so I tried to do that to just, you know, be with them, fit in. It was rough, for sure. Coaching is honestly, uh, it's one of my favorite things that I get to do. You know, you show up, and you know Tim's going to show up, and he's going to be there, and he's going to make you work, and I just know that's getting me to the places where I know I can be in the sport. So I realized a few weeks into cross-country practices that, uh, if you actually wanted to be around the athletes, then you were going to have to run with them. At first I thought, you know, maybe I'll do a 5K or a 10K or something. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll just do a half marathon. I mean, we run a lot. I think I could do a half marathon. And by the time I got in shape to do a half marathon, I thought, what the heck? I'll just go for it and do a marathon. There's no better feeling than turn around and seeing Tim Fritzen behind you. I was fortunate enough to qualify for Boston on my first try at that marathon in Dallas. I got cell phone service and we had a lot of text messages that were, are you guys okay? Were you near the finish line? And, and I literally had to use uh, like Twitter to figure out exactly what had happened, that there had been a couple of explosions at the finish line. Uh, and so thankfully we were away from the city. My wife was there, I had a couple of friends there, and uh, I was just so glad that we weren't uh, we weren't in the area, and the more I thought about the city and the community of just the running community as a whole, I thought, you know, if they do this, if they have the marathon next year, which they were instantly saying, you know, we will run this in 2014, then I want to be there. I want to be a part of showing not just the nation, but, you know, the world that senseless acts of violence and terrorism aren't going to stop us from living. It was, it was a feeling of celebration. I mean, it was a feeling of we're here and, and we are going to run. He is my best friend's older brother. And uh, m my best friend Ryan and Chad kind of became like brothers that I didn't have. Tim, uh, Tim was kind of our third, third son. Uh, I've got uh, Chad and then Ryan's our youngest son and uh, Ryan and, and Tim were best friends growing up and Tim was always at our house and uh, grew up uh, just kind of with Chad as his, as his older brother. Running is something that over the last five years, four years, he and I have shared a passion for and when he and his wife moved back to Kansas City I mean, Chad and I have always been friends, but it kind of instantly like regalvanized our relationship, if you will. Once the running bug got both of them, uh, they just they just were were almost inseparable in, in terms of talking about running and and uh, the excitement of of running Boston. And uh, then the first time Tim ran, uh, Chad was just on cloud nine, you know, just watching every minute of it, watching every time he could, and 
and uh, so uh, that was it was pretty cool. Former church youth leader from Liberty is missing right now. He never returned home from a run last night. Concern is growing about where Chad Rogers might be, and search teams are coming together right now to look for the 30-year-old. Tim Fritzen and Tim Nixon uh, came driving up, just you know, flying into our house and said, you know, what can we do? What can we do? And Tim basically, with, without his leadership, we would have never had got, gotten it started the way it got started. And then the, then the police got involved and, you know, other, other organizations. From, from a standpoint of Tim, like I said, he's kind of our third son. So it, we were real proud of, of him taking the, the role in that. Um, you know, just an amazing young man that would, you know, would, would take on this, this responsibility. So just that support, that support not only spiritually, but just being there, you know, just, just having somebody to, to, to cry with and to, to, to get that support was amazing. It is the outcome no one wanted. The family of Chad Rogers says police have found his body. He'd been missing since Monday night when he went for a nighttime run and never came home. Let's his strong faith. And his strong belief of being there for people. I think that was his biggest gift, is recognizing that others need your time. Qualifying for the Boston Marathon was something that he had always wanted to do. It was like a life goal for him. I just thought that in his honor and in his memory, it would be a good way to remember him and a good way to honor him, but also to honor his family. Uh, if I were to go out to the Boston Marathon and and run in his honor, and so uh, I did a few things to try to do that. When Chad went missing, we used social media to kind of uh, spur on the search, if you will, and one of the kind of hashtags that popped up is was red shoes, black shorts, because that's what Chad had on the last time they saw him. And so I, I got a pair of red racing flats and I wore some black shorts with my jersey and, and so I raced in that, but I also wrote his name on my race number. Um, you, you get a big number for, your, for the front of your jersey, but it doesn't have anything else on it besides the number. They don't print people's names on them. So we used a Sharpie and wrote Chad's name. Uh, and one of the cool things about the Boston Marathon is that when spectators see that, they'll cheer for you by name. They don't know you. I mean, they're just cheering for some stranger. But So it was really cool. And, and multiple times on the course, it brought tears um, into my eyes. I was glad I had sunglasses on. Uh, because as I'm running, People would say, great job, Chad. You look great, Chad. You're doing awesome. Keep going, Chad. Um, and so I got to hear that, and I wish his family could have been there to hear that too. Even though he wasn't there and uh, he was never able to qualify, it was as if he got cheered on in the Boston Marathon, which would have been his dream. We raced for Tim and Tim races for Chad, and we'd like to think Tim maybe races for us a little bit too, but no, it was great that Tim was able to do that for Chad, and I know Chad was looking down smiling on him, because, I mean, that's his dream, and to have a guy like Tim fulfill it for him, that's pretty special. Distance running endurance athletics has a tendency to be very, very selfish. You manage your training schedule, you, you, your family has to sacrifice time and, and those sorts of things and it's about how fast can I run and what can I do and I just wanted to be sure that at least for me personally the entire thing uh, was about something greater than myself.